Welcome, and thank you for joining me and a few of my friends as we take a look at the world of pneumatics. We're going to explore a little bit about how you can integrate pneumatics into your home haunt. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the materials and s that you can use, um, some of the systems you need, what you, what you do need, what you don't need, and then we're going to break it down and we're going to take a look at the individual props. I've got another baker's dozen of props um, here, all pneumatically operated, and uh, this is going to be similar to the video I did on the motor-driven props. And if you haven't seen that yet, um, I'll make sure to stick a link up here for you to go take a look at that. Kind of the same general idea, but we look at motor-driven props. So without any further delay, let's get to it. visiting the channel for the very first time, welcome. I hope you find the information here useful. Um, please take a second, uh, if you do, and, and click that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified whenever we post new material to the channel. Um, I'll also be posting uh, a bunch of links down below for a lot more information, um, go into a lot more detail on all the stuff we're covering here. Um, I wish I had the time to do it all here, but if I did, we'd be here for three hours. So if you want more information, make sure to go down there and take a look, um, especially that forum post. Uh, if you've never been out on that forum, uh, spend some time there. Lots of great information on a whole host of different prop building uh, topics. So um, explore that. Um, and also, uh, you may find useful, um, I've got a book, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Do-It-Yourself Animatronics. I do have a chapter on pneumatics in here. Uh, that goes into detail uh, on a lot of things we'll talk about today. Um, check it out. It's uh, available at a bunch of the different uh, robot and, and servo building uh, sites. Um, it's also uh, available on Amazon if you want to go take a look over there, read some of the reviews, see if it's something that might be of interest to you. Um, I think it would really help you out. So go check that out. I'll put a link to that uh, down below as well. So with that, let's get started. All right, so let's get right into it. We're going to try and demystify this whole subject of pneumatics. Uh, it's, it's not very complicated, really. Once you put one of these together, um, you're going to probably catch the bug, and you're going to want to build more and, uh, and keep expanding your repertoire here and building new designs. And like I said, I've got, uh, I think, eight or nine different designs here. We've got three or four more that we're going to add to the end of the video. Um, and we're going to show you all sorts of different props that you can use. But before you can get to get the mechanism, you have to start putting together some of the materials. And so let's take a look at that. Um, let's first start talking a little bit about, you know, the basics of, the, of a pneumatic system. Now, of course, the big thing is always, well, I have to have a compressor. And yes, you do have to have an air, air compressor of some kind um, to get started. Um, one of the small pancake ones that you see, you know, running air guns and stuff in shops work well. Um, I'm not going to go into that really deeply. Again, that link uh, from Haunt Forum has got a great article on choosing a compressor. Um, but I will offer this bit of advice. Um, buy one bigger than you think you're going to need. Once you get one, uh, that little pancake compressor will do a couple of these small props. Um, but if you start getting into more bigger props, bigger cylinders, um, more air hungry props, they're going to want uh, a much bigger compressor. I personally run um, two stand up compressors at my haunt, one on each side of my house. Um, I did have to add another electrical circuit uh, to run one of them, a dedicated circuit for my big compressor. But uh, um, this is kind of uh, something you get started with and it just kind of keeps building. So you will need some kind of a compressor. Harbor Freight's got them, Home Depot's got them. Uh, you know, you can get them used off of, uh, you know, Craigslist, so a lot of opportunities. You may have one sitting in your garage right now that you use for your tools, so, um, you know, that's the starting place. Okay, so now it's time to move that air from our compressor to our props. 
Now, uh, what I do is I connect a three-way manifold uh, directly to my compressor. Um, oftentimes, I've got different lines going in different directions. Um, and this uh, you know, three-way valve allows me to put in three different uh, air lines, send them out uh, in different directions and to each of the individual props. Now, instead of using the big commercial lines, uh, they're bulky, they're harder to hide, uh, and they're more expensive oftentimes, um, I use 3 8 inch um, polyurethane line. All the line I use is polyurethane. You can get the polyethylene, it's a little cheaper. Um, however, the polyurethane um, uh, bends better, um, it's more crush resistant, uh, but it is more expensive. So take a look at see what fits for your budget and, and go from there. But I go from 3 8 inch line for my compressors by making a little adapter. Just goes in here and pushes right in and then it's got a push connector and you're going to be using a lot of these. Um, and the airline just fits into there. Um, and uh, in order to uh, release these lines, um, you just press down on the collar that unlocks the t internal teeth and you can uh, remove your airline um, and make any changes that you need to do. So um, I've got the three-way manifold, the fitting, then I've got the polyurethane 3 8 inch line and uh, that usually goes to some kind of a manifold. Um, this is one that's uh, similar to the one I use in the middle of my yard. Um, the 3 8 inch line comes in here um, and then I've got eight outputs here that can go to individual props and then on the far end it's got another 3 8 inch line that I can extend out farther if I need to but uh, you know this is usually for for one my, each of my big compressors they're each running about eight props so this is usually sufficient um, so you know you're going to need to to um, pick up quite a bit of airline. Um, I like using the 3 8 the larger line, um, to feed my manifold and then go to quarter inch line to each of the individual props. So um, you can adjust your, your uh, compressor, um, air, air pressure coming off of your compressor and I usually use that, uh, have that as high as the highest uh, pressure that any of my props are going to use. And then each prop, as it comes off of this uh, manifold, is going to have its own pressure gauge. And this allows me to adjust the pressure. Every prop is going to be different, going to need more or less pressure. Um, this allows me to dial in each of the props um, so that they get exactly the amount of pressure they need. Now make sure it's got an arrow here, flow, airflow arrow. Make sure that you plug it in and the air is flowing through it correctly. So. Um, again, each of my props has got one of these. Again, I installed the push fittings um, to make it really easy if one of these malfunctions to be able to pull it off, throw a new one on. Now, that is going to go up into your next component. Um, each of your, sol or your uh, props is going to have its own solenoid, and uh, this is a solenoid. I like to standardize all my parts as much as possible, and I do that with the solenoids, with the fittings. Um, one little warning here, um, you can get U.S. parts made in USA, uh, which is what I prefer to use, um, or you can get these less expensively overseas, and uh, those um, solenoids and cylinders do work. Um, however, the, the made in the USA parts, the fittings are threads, um, they're NPT threads, and the overseas um, solenoids and cylinders use BSPT threads. They are not interchangeable. So pick a standard, go with that, um, because you're not going to be able to go back and forth or you're going to find yourself carrying and, and keeping two sets um, of fittings uh, that can be confusing, uh, especially in the dark on Halloween night if you have to do a repair or a replacement. So that little warning. So. Um, for all of my, virtually all of mine, we'll take a look at a couple props that are um, uh, use something different, but for most of my props, I use what's called um, a five port, four way five port um, uh, solenoid. So you're going to have the air coming in here. Um, again, this is going to be a quarter inch line coming from the manifold. And then you're going to have two lines going to each of the ports on the, the cylinder. We'll get to that in a second. And then you're going to have two mufflers. Um, I like to use, uh, you know, the mufflers uh, for the outgoing air. 
Now, one problem with pneumatics, of course, is that, you know, sometimes they can be noisy. Sometimes that noise can be useful. Sometimes you want to minimize that as much as possible. So you can, of course, put um, regular fittings on here, run airlines, and, and extend that out away from your prop if, if that noise is going to be bothersome um, or take away from the effect of that particular prop. So another possibility, but uh, some kind of uh, muffler or cap here, if for no other reason, just to keep grit and grime from getting into the um, workings of your um, uh, solenoid. Now you can get these in 12 volt, 24 volt, 110. Um, I prefer 12 volt, that's what I use as much as possible in my hot. Um, so again, standardized, I always know that uh, every one of them is going to be 12 volt, they're all going to work. Um, you know, and then they're going to connect up to a 12 volt uh, adapter wall wart um, to power them. So you're going to have your lines running over to your cylinder, and I want to talk a, just a few minutes about cylinders. They come in, you know, a wide variety of sizes and shapes, little tiny ones, bigger ones. Uh, you know, there's an 18 inch here on the, the Leaping Spider we'll take a look at a little later. Um, so you can find any size to fit your prop, what, you know, whatever your needs are. Um, a couple things that you're going to hear talked about when you go looking at cylinders um, that are important um, is stroke, and that's how long of an extension, you know, the rod is going to make, and bore, which is how big around um, your cylinder is. The bigger it is, the more air it's going to use, the faster it'll go, the more power it can lift. Um, so, of course, the bigger ones are usually more expensive, and they do use more air. So you don't want to use one bigger than you need. Um, but I always try and overbuild a little bit uh, to allow uh, me to add some weight to my prop um, if I need to. So um, you can get these in a lot of configurations. You can get them in one way where it just has one um, air inlet, and then it's going to use either gravity or a spring to pull it back. Um, I prefer the double acting. Um, you've got air coming in um, to drive the cylinder out, or your rod out, and then you're going to have another airline coming in here to drive it back down. Um, this allows you to adjust the speed of both uh, up and down on your cylinder, which again allows you to really dial in your prop. Um, this is a universal mount, uh, which is what I prefer. You can either mount it on the nose, or you can mount it on the tail, or for most, a lot of my props, they need to pivot, so it's going to be able to pivot on this back um, rod here. Um, some of the time, you'll, you'll get your cylinders, and they're going to have a pin already installed on this. Uh, most of my props, I like to have a bolt back here of some kind. Um, you can, I've got a great big nut that I set this on, and you can drive that pin right out of there if you need to, so that's not an issue. So you're going to need to be able to mount this, and, and there's all sorts of different mounting brackets you can buy. Um, the cost of those can run up. You know, you can, some kind of a pivot bracket on here, they've got one piece, two piece ones. You can get ones that mount and solidly put this in place, that uh, bolt onto the nose and the tail. You can use one or both. You can mount them horizontally, vertically, whatever direction you want. Um, most of my uh, props I make my own brackets, uh, metal brackets, um, just to try and save some money. They're not that difficult to make. Um, so I do a lot of those uh, myself and make them. Um, but uh, if you don't have access to or the ability to make them, you know, make sure that you pick up some mounting brackets. And you're going to also need to say have some way to connect the end of your rod to your prop. So there's all sorts of rod ends you can get. Again, this is threaded on the end here. So you can put a stop nut um, on the end here and then thread this, uh, you know, a rod end or a clevis of some kind up onto the end of this and then adjust that length that gives you a little bit of adjustability to dial in your prop, uh, you know, once you get it built. So spend a little time uh, considering how long of a, a stroke you need, um, how much power you've got. Again, a great link over there on the Han forum on kind of trying to determine how much you need. Um, the length, the mounting system, and then of course your fittings. Again, you're going to need to use some kind of um, fittings, whether you're using the, the US parts or the, or, or the overseas ones, make sure you get the right fittings. Now for my cylinders, what I prefer to use here on, on the cylinder 
are what we call flow control valves. And um, these allow me to um, adjust um, the air going in to, to my cylinders um, on both the up and the down so I can really dial in the speed. I may want it to go out really fast and back in really slow. However I want to do that, I can do that. So um, that's what I prefer um, for mine. And uh, when you're ordering your parts, um, I recommend uh, picking up some spares. I really hate it if I'm trying to build a project or if I have a prop go down um, and I need to make a repair or an extension and not have the parts available. So um, whenever I order my parts, I always order some extras. Um, you know, they have a, a wide variety of different fittings in addition to the ones that go onto the cylinders and uh, the solenoids. You can get, you know, extension ones. You can get splitters if you need to split them more ways. Um, you know, in, in a whole different, you know, they have plastic manifolds and, and a whole different uh, array of things. Um, you can get, um, you can, uh, most of these fittings come you have to thread them in. So I get another one here. When you're threading these together, um, you have to have some kind of a sealant on the end of these. And a lot of these fittings come with a, a few wraps of, of tape on here. And um, when you're doing your pneumatics, um, air is gold. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't have any leaks or minimize them as much as you can. So. Um, I find um, that sometimes I still get leaks if I just rely on the thread uh, wrap that comes on these. So I always add um, some T plus 2. I spread a little bit of this all the way around, put my fittings together, let it set overnight is best if you can, and, um, and I, that really takes care of the leaks for me. I don't have uh, any air leaks. And, um, and I I'm, I'm, can be confident that my system is nice and solid and, and, uh, and not wasting air that I'm going to use for my prop. So, you know, that's another um, alternative to, to doing this. Now, I'm not going to really go into the controllers part of it. Um, again, that's a, a video for another day. Um, but there are um, quite a few con you know, controllers you can use, and there's a lot of single-use controllers. Uh, that seems to be a big thing right now. I love it. Um, I know Fry Props has got one. Um, this is a new one I found out uh, at Transworld last year. It's the Odin from HauntBots. Um, Forty bucks, I think, is what it was for a single pneumatic prop, but single cylinder. Um, you know, that's pretty cool. So take a look at those. Um, if you want more information, there's more information in the book, more information down below. So, um, you know, you are going to need some kind of a controller, um, and it could be something as easy as, you know, a push button and a relay. You know, these are pretty cheap, and you can push the button and activate your prop, um, or you can get into something more complex where you've got it being triggered, but, you know, uh, most of my props are, are triggered by some kind of a PIR, a passive infrared sensor, um, you know, like these. These are the they're encased already in, in PVC, and if you want to see how to do this, I've got a video on my page um, how I make these up um, out of PVC pipe, really cheap, really easy. So, um, you know, you can do those. Um, one other little uh, tool that I recommend that you get, um, these are really cheap, but these are um, for cutting your airline. It's important that you get a nice straight end so that they go in there and, and seat properly in the fitting. So you just put these in here like that and snap it down and it makes a nice clean end on the end of your um, airline. So again, pick up one of these, they're really inexpensive. Add it to your cart when you're buying everything else. So um, with that, I think that gives you the basics. Again, explore down below if you want more information on any of this. Um, but I think it's time to take a look at some prompts. So we're going to break down each one of these individually. Um, give you a brief little look at them. If you want some uh, more details, a lot of these uh, props I've done full videos on, and uh, I'll include at the end of the video my playlist uh, for all my pneumatic props. Make sure to go take a look at that, and uh, you can find any of these props, or not all of them, but lots of them, um, in much more detail, longer videos. If you have any questions, of course, post those down below. I'll see if I can get those answered for you. So let's get right into the props. 
We'll start with the classic pop-up. Uh, this version uh, is in aluminum, which I only recommend for a uh, lightweight prop that's not violent at all. Uh, we did this for an all-day pneumatic seminar. Um, this was the build they took home. And here's the same version uh, in steel, which is what I recommend for any prop that's going to be more violent, um, more active, uh, used more. Um, or carry heavier loads. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dead with Dave uh, for uh, providing the plans for these, and you can find those um, on my website. Um, I'll make sure to post a link down below if you want to build one of these for yourself. This prop is a commercial version of the door pounder unit. I think this came off of uh, an assembly line, uh, but you can find uh, a kit for this. I know Fright Props carries one. Um, I'm just using a uh, simple relay to uh, activate this one, um, but you can certainly speed it up if you were using a prop controller um, to pound on a wall or door. Now this is my version of a trash can trauma. Uh, it actually is a pillar that sits next to my pirate ship. And uh, again, I'm using a push button and relay to fire this off. Um, as uh, you fire it off, the head pops up. It actually drives that lid open and then it's pulled shut by just that thin fishing wire at the top, pulls the lid back down on top of them. Now, one thing uh, with a cylinder like this, unless you get a non-rotating one, they will twist around, and sooner or later your head will be pointing backwards. So you need to attach a bungee cord, or like I did, a uh, couple coat hangers to keep him facing straight forward all the time. Here's another classic, uh, the Monster in a Box. This uh, was actually my very first pneumatic prop that I built. I uh, built it at a local make-and-take here. And uh, this particular prop uh, uses a single acting cylinder, uh, drives it up, and just relies on the weight of the box and the chains to pull that lid back down. So uh, you can see it's just got a little crossbar here that contacts that upper lid and drives it up. Uh, this is also uh, one of the two props, uh, this along with my trash can trauma, that uses a two-port solenoid valve. It's uh, really all it needs. And uh, we've got the speakers for the audio track and the red light. And um, it utilizes uh, one of the prop controllers, my two button bangers, uh, to run it. Now this prop uh, I designed uh, to put over the top of my porch. This uh, spider comes down right over the top of the heads uh, as of the trick-or-treaters. As they're uh, waiting to get the candy, they hear the noise over their head and it uh, pops over their head. Um, quite a simple design. Uh, you can see a couple of the brackets here that um, I just made myself. Uh, again, this is using one of my prop controllers, my kitchen sink prop controller, uh, to run it. But um, just uh, made those uh, L brackets on the front and the back and to connect to that pipe. Um, and uh, again, just a simple program uh, and uh, runs the pneumatic cylinder and then the light is triggered uh, for him. Now this is my eel. Uh, he's working um, in my pirate scene. Um, one of the few props, pneumatic props that I have that uh, is designed in wood. Um, but again, it's pretty heavy duty. It's all two by fours and that slide. Um, to propel that um, um, eel out. Uh, and then he's got a PVC tube that is cast inside of him um, that is attached there. And you can see that uh, cylinder is just buried inside the mechanism. This is my striking snake. Um, again, fairly easy design here, um, triggered by that PIR there. And uh, it's just connected inside that little half coffin uh, in the back. Again, dual acting cylinder with flow control valves um, controlling uh, the speed of, of the cylinder bo both in and out. Um, and then it's just kind of supported in the upper end by a hole that's drilled through the top of that little coffin uh, to hold it up. And then I uh, had to add a little bit of uh, coating there so it would slide nice and smoothly. This prop here is my grandfather clock. Uh, when it gets triggered, I have a motor that starts that 13-hour clock above uh, running backwards. And then the pneumatic cylinder opens up, uh, triggers a light inside of it to reveal the ghoul hiding inside the uh, grandfather clock. 
Now I get one extra free motion uh, when that door opens up. You'll see a little cable down there off that eye hook um, that goes up to pull that arm up. So as that ghoul comes out, it lifts his arm um, out, and then gravity just uh, brings it back down uh, when that door closes. Next, we'll take a look at uh, my leaping uh, spider. He uh, is along the walkway as my trick-or-treaters come up to the door, and he jumps up uh, right to the edge of the fence. And then as an added bonus, um, he squirts a fine mist, uh, spits um, on him, uh, always a big surprise. To, for those eagle-eyed watchers, you may have noticed a little tube coming out of the skull on my trash can trauma. Um, that actually uh, blows air, um, split the air line and blows air, but this guy's got an electric water pump that uh, will actually uh, um, spit on him as he's up at the top of his extension there. Next to the stage is uh, my third witch for my witch's scene. Uh, when she's triggered, uh, tr the fog comes out uh, the bottom of her broom, rises up over the top of uh, all the trick-or-treaters in the scene. And um, you can see that fog hose running along there. Um, here's the mechanism uh, without the fog hose on it, uh, with that cylinder mounted uh, on the upper back there. Now, storage with these big props is always a big deal. So you'll see that um, I've got uh, bolt-on brackets so I can remove that upper section. And then to help that uh, cylinder, um, I've added a heavy-duty spring here to get the, uh, this started when it's initially triggered. That's the hardest part for it to lift um, the very start. That spring will uh, help pull that uh, upper end down. The Casa Fear Groundbreaker is next. Uh, this is another prop uh, made with 2x4s. Uh, and the plans for him can also be found on my website, uh, which you'll find linked down below. This is my take of the Skelerector prop. Uh, it will have a skeleton on it, uh, leap up when he's triggered, um, and then he folds back down. Now, I adapted uh, Borno's plans. Uh, I had this cylinder. It was a little shorter than the one in his plans, so I had to adjust uh, my um, cross beams there a little bit to make this work, but it worked out really well. And um, I've uh, added uh, the plans, Borno's uh, link down below, as well as one from Haunted Yard. Eventually, uh, anybody that builds pneumatic props is going to want to build a scissor prop. And mine is uh, located here at the end of my hallway. Um, I've got uh, foam walls there and, and bars, and I have a skeleton that attaches to the scissor prop. Comes right up to the edge of the bars. Light um, comes up on him. Uh, and, of course, there's a scare track and big speakers. So um, Now, of course, uh, I couldn't drill into that cabinet behind me or even into my wood floors uh, below, so had to do a lot of bracing for that upright for the 2x4s to make sure that uh, it was nice and solid uh, for that uh, scissor prop to extend out. Uh, put some plans down below for uh, a two-part series, uh, getting your scissor prop uh, put together correctly and, and with all your measurements uh, is highly critical to make these things run properly. So um, if you're interested in doing uh, a scissor proper your own, make sure to check that out. Well, I hope you found the video helpful. Hopefully it inspired you to give pneumatics a try, start to integrate them into your own haunt. Um, please make sure to uh, check out the videos uh, at the playlist on the end uh, for more information a little longer. Uh, videos on several of these props that I showed here. Um, subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, make sure to look into those and explore all those links I put down below. I put down a couple for uh, some other props too. This is certainly not all the pneumatic props. I certainly could have included another dozen styles. So there's a lot more to discover out there. And, um, and hopefully um, if you want some more information on animatronics in general, Go check out my book, and uh, hopefully that will help you uh, expand your pneumatics and as well as all your other props as well. So with that, keep on building.